Thank you so much, Steph. It's the waiting game. Health Canada could be in a position to approve a COVID-19 vaccine within the coming days. But perhaps an even bigger task than rolling out the vaccines will be assuring the reluctant. Now, many Canadians have questions before rolling up their sleeves because unlike other shots, the COVID vaccine on the near horizon has not been around for decades. So let's break things down and what this rollout could look like or maybe what it should look like. Joining me now, emergency room physician, Dr. Kashif Prasada. Good morning to you. Good morning. Thank you so much for joining. Uh, okay, the vaccine, that's all a lot of people are talking about, or vaccines. Uh, when, as we wait right now, what are things that you are looking for when it comes to a rollout? Because there are so many things that should be keep, kept in mind. So I think the biggest issue is how are they going to do it? Um, this is something they have to give to 40 million Canadians in a short amount of time. Uh, how are they going to make sure that most high-risk people get it first? How are they going to make sure that they do it safely and store it? Like some of the vaccines need minus 80 freezers, which is uh, something extraordinary. So I think, you know, they have a lot of logistical challenges. I'm really happy to see that the military is involved. That's probably one of the most effective institutions we have in Canada. So um, you know, I'm looking forward to it. I think it's going to be a big challenge for them to do it right. Uh, the government introducing the Ontario government a task force, and it's a unique team. It, it's got, you know, infectious disease specialist Dr. Isaac Bogosh, who we are familiar with here on the show. They've got bioethicists. They've got um, people who are very familiar with logistics. Former police chief Mark Saunders is on there. Um, what do you think of the task force and the diversity on there and how it may or may not help? I think it looks good. I think they could have used more primary care people or, um, you know, what I'm glad to see was, you know, they got Dr. Bogosh, which is excellent. They got, you know, um, another thing is they had the CEO of Linamar, which is a great engineering logistics company in uh, Canada. I don't know if people know, but they were working on a crash ventilator program at the start of the pandemic. So they're a great resource and great Canadians to have on the team. Dr. Prasada, there's a lot of people who are unsure. Uh, no doubt, have been unsure and anxious throughout this entire process. Uh, what do you say to someone who says, I don't know if I want to get a vaccine when it is available to the general population? I think some of that feeling is natural. Uh, this vaccine was developed in less than a year uh, from an unknown illness. I think one thing to remember is that the, tri the, the candidates that we have so far, the three, uh, were tested on over 100,000 people. Uh, I think there was very few adverse effects. Uh, they're shown to be 100% safe in preventing hospitalization and 95% effective in preventing the actual infection in the first place. Uh, they're starting to test it on children um, now uh, for one of them. So I think one thing to remember is that, you know, everyone's nervous about it, but it's proven to be pretty safe so far. Uh, the technology underlying at least the mRNA vaccines looks fairly safe as well. And it's a lot better than actually getting COVID-19. Um, whatever effects there are from this so far, I'm, I'm going to line up first thing as soon as it comes out. Um, and it's the only way to stay safe 100% from COVID-19 that we know so far. Uh, before you go, I want to get your take on the new protocol screening tools for Toronto and Peel for the school system. Uh, now looking at that one symptom, having to get tested or isolating with siblings up to, you know, 10 days or so. Do you think this is going far enough to far your thoughts? I think it should have been done from the beginning. Um, COVID-19 mimics the common cold. Uh, they didn't have runny nose uh, at the beginning in these guidelines, and they should have. Um, they sent you know, families with one sick child, the other siblings could go to school, and they've stopped that now. So I think these are, these are overdue changes, and I think it'll make uh, school safer. It's going to be, unfortunately, more inconvenient for parents, though. But mm -hmm. we're seeing outbreaks in schools now in accelerating um, in the last few weeks. And I think this will go a long way to keeping schools open longer, hopefully. Okay, hopefully. Dr. Prasad, I appreciate your time. You're going to stick around for us. Thank you so much for being generous with your time this morning. Uh, coming up in 15 minutes, if you have a question for Dr. Kashif Prasad, you can uh, call us 1-866-267-3797, feedback at breakfasttelevision.ca. We can talk about that rollout. We can also talk about the school system, uh, whatever you are wondering, and uh, we'll get through as many questions as we can. We'll take a quick break here on BT. Be right back.